Hi, everybody. I hope you guys are having a great week. I know it's been a while since I've uploaded a video, but I'm sure things are crazy for you and it's crazy up here, too. And I hope you guys are doing well. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys about some things from this Pablo Neruda poem. In September, we read several Langston Hughes poems, and I mentioned that I wanted to focus in on a different poet every month. So September, we focused in on Langston Hughes, and in October, I'd like to read poems by Pablo Neruda. Pablo Neruda, if you read up on him, is a famous 20th century Chilean poet. He is famous for his love sonnets. As you can see, this poem is titled um, Sonnet 17 from 100 Love Sonnets. So um, obviously, there's 100 of these, and this is number 17 of them. Um, so that is what you can put for the first title. Now, whenever I ask you guys to TP cast or to annotate something, <coughs> something that I'm noticing is that I see things that are highlighted and underlined, but I don't see anything labeled. So if you were in class and I asked you to annotate, I wouldn't accept it if you had just underlined but didn't label anything. That doesn't do anybody any good if you don't write something. All right, the same thing applies on a document. So, for example, if I say, I don't love you as if um, you were a rose of salt, topaz, let's say I'm going to have, I'm going to highlight all my similes green. Okay, well, I need to then label down here. I'm going to make a key. And I am going to show my key as, I'm going to highlight its simile. So then when I'm grading, you see, then I can see, okay, all of my similes are green. All right, so be sure that you guys have a key on your annotation. Then maybe all your diction, like let's say obscure. I'm going to make my diction highlighted pink. Okay, and I really like secret. I'm going to highlight that pink too. All right, and maybe um, I like down here hidden. All of these, this diction that indicates something precious and protected. All right, I would go down here and I would say diction and I would highlight it this fuchsia color. All right, this is for me, if I am looking at a student's annotations, this is what I see. This is how, this is what I'd like to see. I don't want to just see things highlighted with nothing, with no key. Another way you can do this is highlight, but, and then comment instead. That's perfectly acceptable. Any way you label it is completely fine, okay? All right, so let's talk about some things. As I just mentioned, um, so first of all, let's talk about the first, the first T, title. We have 100 love sonnets, and then you have this XVII. That's Roman numerals, of course, for 17. Um, what you could write here, I'm just gonna comment up here. You would write title. This is sonnet 17 from Pablo Neruda's 100 love sonnets. Okay, you can just infer that from the title. That's a way that you can think of that. We have this is. I'm going to read it to you, and then then I'll discuss it. I don't love you as if you were a rose of salt, topaz, or arrow of carnations that propagate fire. I love you as one loves certain obscure things secretly between the shadow and the soul. I love you as the plant that doesn't bloom but carries the light of those flowers hidden within itself. And thanks to your love, the tight aroma that arose from the earth lives dimly in my body. I love you without knowing how or when or from where. I love you directly without problems or pride. I love you like this because I don't know any other way to love except in this form in which I am not, nor are you. So close that your hand upon my chest is mine. So close that your eyes close with my dreams. So um, first, we talked about the title. Now, in terms of paraphrase, once again, paraphrase is when you kind of put the poem in your own words. When we're reading it, sonnets from the 15th, 16th, 17th century. Sometimes it's necessary for you guys to literally figure out what the words are saying. This one is from the 20th century and it's using pretty familiar language. And so there's no need 
for you guys to go through and translate this to or in a way that you understand. Um, so under paraphrase is also when you consider the structure of the poem, the rhyme scheme, the rhythm. Something I do want to note that in this poem, this was originally written in Spanish. So we can't really say, oh, this, let's think about the rhythm and the rhyme of this poem, because this was not the original words used. Um, the original Spanish would have had a very different rhythm and rhyme compared to this. Okay, so we, we have to consider that as we're reading the poem. But there are certain parts of the poem that can be confusing. And it's very important that you become aware of the parts that you're not sure of. For example, me personally, I have not been super sure of these first Two lines. Okay. I don't love you as if you were a rose of salt, topaz, or arrow of carnations that propagate fire. I wasn't really sure of what that meant. <clears throat> now I believe that a rose of salt, it says it's near the sea, but it's also um, like this pink color. And topaz is a precious gem that can be like bluish color, um, like a like a gemstone. And carnations are is a flower, a beautiful flower, um, and something that propagates fire. You imagine like this bold. Um, each of these things are bold, and um, these physical colors. These um, someone in first period they described it as these luscious, physical, obvious things. Okay, he says that is not what my love is. My love is not this outward showy, conspicuous thing. Instead, he says, I love you as one loves certain obscure things secretly between the shadow and the soul. It's important that you understand it's not, he's not secret because he's ashamed. He loves her secretly because it's, she is precious. This love he feels is precious to him, something he's protecting, something that is so important to him that he doesn't want to expose and to ruin that, okay? The second stanza, I love, this is also something that is an interesting image and it's it can be confusing. It's really important that when you guys are writing that you show me that you understand what you are reading. OK, if you don't understand the poem, it is very obvious when you write your paragraphs. I'm seeing that as I'm grading um, the poems from Langston Hughes, the Aunt Sue stories and the other poems we read in September. Some of your paragraphs, there are some words that you guys use that it just shows that you you're not real sure about something. And so really make sure you understand the poem before you write a write a response. Don't try to dance around something or pretend you understand if you don't. If you have a question, be sure you ask me. Be sure you come to our face-to-face -face meetings. Be sure you come to office hours and, and take that opportunity because um, it shows in your writing, okay? <clears throat> so let's look at the second stanza. I love you as the plant that doesn't bloom but carries the light of those flowers hidden within itself. And thanks to your love, the tight aroma that arose from the earth lives dimly in my body. So here's what I think that's meaning. Imagine a rose, a rose bush. Okay. If you walk past a rose bush, it's this, you, you see the flowers outwardly. And you, if you walked past, you would see, not only see the flower, but you would smell the aroma permeating the air. He's saying, instead of aroma that blooms outside, he loves you as a plant that doesn't bloom, but carries the flower, the light of the flowers hidden within itself. So imagine a, a flower blooming inside a person instead of outside. Inside, that flower is blooming inside a person. And thanks to your love, that tight aroma that arose, okay, so in, in that flower is blooming inside him, and the aroma that he would be smelling from the flowers is, is permeating his soul. And that is the love. That, the, that he feels and that she feels. Their love is the smell from the flower that's blooming inside of him. Okay, so this is another simile, right? As, 
as the plant that doesn't bloom. And this is an extended simile, just as that first one is a rather extended simile. So I'm going to label that my green color. And I'm saying uh, secretly and hidden. Um, and I'm saying <clears throat> this is these, he uses these kind of extended similes to explain how his love is is different than these usual things. You know, a ro just like um, a rose of salt or topaz or carnations are outward beauty and, and flashy and obvious signs of, of beauty and and um, and just like a plant that blooms is an outward sign. He is saying that this love is beautiful within. It's between the shadow and the soul. It's hidden within itself. This it lives within him. Okay. <clears throat> then we have I love you, I love you, I love you. We have that repetition there. Interesting here, so close that your hand upon my chest is mine. So close that your eyes close with my dreams. This is kind of up to interpretation here. Students in class are kind of conflicted. Um, some students read this as he's possessive of her, of, of his lover's body, um, that this, that you are mine. Um, others <clears throat> indicate that he is seeking, he wants this complete intimacy, okay? This, he has oneness. He, he because, just as the love he feels for his lover is, is like this flower blooming within him and the aroma permeating him. Um, when, imagine them laying in bed and her hand is on his chest and he is looking at that hand and thinking that that is his hand, that that's, she does not, she's not a separate person, that they are one in that moment and that her eyes are closing and that those are his dreams that they share that moment together so his idea of love is complete intimacy and oneness okay and that is how he loves her that's that is kind of i think maybe his message that he's trying to get across and and what he's intending with this image here i would probably if i had to label this something imagery that indicates oneness or intimacy Okay, so anyway, you have the connotation um, here, and that is some things we've talked about with, with class so far. Um, please let me know if you have any questions as you've gone through the TPCAST process. You should also think about the attitude, which is you know, the author's tone, the tone towards, the, towards love and his lover, um, his, the mood of the poem, which is how you feel while reading. And, um, and remember, this is the intended mood. You know, <clears throat> uh, also think about the theme, the meaning, which is once again, this idea of love. Love shouldn't be something outward. It shouldn't be something that other people should see. And you shouldn't be doing it for a reason for others. It should be something precious, something that you protect, something that is part of your soul, um, part of you that you, keep and protect and, and that is you and your lover should be one I think is, is one of the meanings that you could glean okay um, so there you go guys please let me know if you have any questions I look forward to seeing you next week during our virtual class